Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, convert an array into a 2D array with conditions. So the idea is we're given an input array of nums which can contain duplicate values, but we need to create a two dimensional array from all of these numbers. And basically the restriction is that every row in the 2D array has to have unique integers, meaning there can't be any duplicates. We have to do that while minimizing the number of rows. And I think the reason why they even say this is because the easiest thing that we could do if this restriction didn't exist is just put every single number in its own row, because that would guarantee that there aren't any duplicates in any of the rows, but they want us to minimize the number of rows. So basically we will be building a 2D matrix and we'll only be adding a new row if we have to. So one thing that you might know notice about a problem like this one is that the number of rows that we're going to have is going to be bounded by the number of copies the most frequent number is. Let's say the most frequent number is 10 and there are, let's say, four copies of 10. Then we're going to end up having four rows because we have to put one of the copies of 10 in each different row. Suppose we're iterating over this input array. How would we know if we have found a duplicate integer? Well, we'd have to keep track of it. And probably the best way to do that would be using some kind of hash data structure, either a hash set or a hash map. Then we would know, okay, like this is a one and we've seen one before. But knowing that we've seen a number before actually isn't enough. It would be good if we actually had a hash map where we could count the number of times that we've seen a number before. For example, if I've seen one three times and now it's the fourth time I'm seeing it, that is significant because that means we put each of these ones in its own row. So we had three rows at least for these three ones, but now we see a fourth one. So we have to either create a fourth row or just insert the one in the fourth row if it already exists. And you might kind of notice a pattern with this. This is the zeroth row, this is the first row, this is the second row, and this is the third row. If this is the fourth time we're seeing this number, then we're going to put it in the fourth minus one row. Or if we've already seen this number three times, as you can see over here, then we're going to put the next copy in the third row. And of course, if we hadn't seen that value at all before, if we'd only seen it, like this is the first time we're seeing a one, we'd put it in the zeroth row. So that's pretty much the idea of solving this problem. What we're going to do is we're going to iterate over the input array. We're going to count the number of times we've seen each number. So here we see one. This is the first time that we're seeing it. So we add it to the first row. Now we see a three. It's the first time that we're seeing it. So we add it to the first row. Four, same thing, add it to the first row. Now we see one for the second time. And we know that because we're counting it in our hash map. So then we add it to a new row that we have to create and we can set the count now to two. Sorry about the handwriting. Now we see two for the first time, so we can just add it to the first row and set its count to one. And we see three for the second time, so we have to put three here. We'll set its count to two as well. And now we see one for the third time, so we do have to create a third row for one. So here you can see solving it that way, we get the same thing that they did in the output. So this is going to be our 2D matrix. Notice that every row doesn't have to be the same length. So it's not actually a matrix, it's a 2D array. Sorry about that. In terms of time complexity, clearly we only have to iterate over the input once. For memory complexity, we are technically building the 2D array, but even if that doesn't count, we do have a hash map which can be, in the worst case, the size of the input array. So time and memory complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the size of the input array. Now let's code this up. So I'm going to create a hash map. I'm going to call it a default dict in Python, and the default value is going to be an integer. So this will basically, like if we haven't inserted a key yet into this, like one, for example, the value of this will still be considered zero. So even if we haven't inserted a key, we're not going to get a key doesn't exist error. We will get zero as the default value. I'm also going to declare the result, which is going to be the 2D matrix that we ultimately end up returning. And before we can return it, we have to build it. So let's go through every number in the input array. We don't care about the index. 
We just want the number itself. Now, let's figure out what is the row that we want to insert this number into. So I'm gonna say for our hash map, let's get how many times we've seen this number before. Initially, it's definitely gonna be zero. So that would mean we insert it into the zeroth row, but we haven't even added the zeroth row yet. So what we would do here is check if the length of result is equal to the row, that means we're gonna get an index out of bounds error. If we try to do result of row, we're gonna get index out of bounds. So what we do is to result, we append this empty row. This is the new row that we're adding. Now we can say result at index row, let's append the current number that we just saw. We're adding this number to this row. And before we forget, we should probably increment the count of the number before this loop iteration is finished. So let's do that. So this actually is the entire code. Notice we only insert a row if it doesn't already exist. Otherwise, we just append the current number to the relevant row. The row comes from how many times we've already seen that number before because we don't ever want any duplicates in the same row. Now let's just run this to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient, even though the runtime is pretty random on leak code. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.